The Art in the Classroom series is produced in cooperation with SACS Arts and Crafts. You can find everything your art desires at SACS. Art materials, equipment, and supplies, including hard-to-find items, for painting, drawing, printmaking, ceramics, sculpture, and more. The world is full of color. Nature inspires many of the colors that we used in decoration. Color brings art to life and even adds emotion and meaning to simple drawings. Artists can use color to grab our attention or to soothe us. In order to choose colors that convey a certain message, artists must understand how we perceive it. Hello. Welcome to Color Concepts. I'm Milan Dillard, and today we are going to be exploring color concepts as they relate to creating art. Before we get started, let's talk about the theory of color. Color is actually the reflection of light. Objects that appear green reflect only green light waves and absorb all others. Black absorbs all the light waves, so no color appears. On the other hand, white reflects all the light waves. Scientists tell us that white light includes the whole color spectrum, while black is the absence of light. But with paint, these rules work the opposite way. If we combine all the colors, we will get black, not white. That's because paint is an object reflecting color, not the light waves themselves. Colors are related in unique ways. Some look good together, and some do not. Some are pure, and some are mixed with white or black, or with other colors. We are going to examine the color spectrum, and learn to use color to create better works of art. To gain an artist's perspective of color, we will visit Raleigh Kenny. Raleigh has been painting for over 25 years. He is a watercolor teacher of national stature, and he has taught in public schools and workshops. His work has been featured in many art publications. He participates in art festivals all around the country as well. Raleigh will show us how color can be best used and teach us how to choose and work with color. So you may want to have a notepad and pencil ready to take some notes. I'd like to talk a little bit, first of all, about maybe how color can create a mood for your work. This is a little sketch that is from uh, the Midwest, kind of a summary uh, little uh, piece in which uh, the color really plays, I think, a major role in uh, the development of uh, the mood. So it's not so much sometimes the subject matter, although the subject matter I think is what people see first, the paint and the color that is laid down to create that presentation is really the song and dance of the painting. That's what makes it entertaining and fun to look at. The three primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. Every color has a complement or a finishing color. Red's complement is green, which is made by mixing the other two primary colors, yellow and blue. Yellow's complement is violet, made by mixing red and blue. And blue's complement is orange, which is a mixture of red and yellow. Artists can refer to a color wheel. It shows the three primaries, red, yellow, and blue. And the three secondary colors, green, violet, and orange. There are also six intermediate or tertiary colors on the outside of the color wheel. 
tertiary means third. So these colors contain three parts of primary color. For example, greenish blue is two parts blue and one part yellow. On the color wheel, similar colors are next to each other. An example is yellow, yellowish orange, and orange. Contrasting colors are separated by three shades. Blue and yellow are contrasting colors. Complementary colors are across from each other, like blue and orange. Let's talk a little bit about the way an artist maybe would approach his palette in terms of the primaries and the secondaries and how he might use them. I, I think many times artists tend to not use pure color on their paintings. They, they tend to move maybe a little bit more toward uh, the secondaries and sometimes two color mixes and sometimes three color mixes for their paintings. But cobalt probably is one of the closest to a pure color in terms of one of the primaries. And if I were mixing, if I were looking for a yellow, I would probably go to lemon yellow. And there you can kind of see the reference to that on my palette. So if I were going to mix a primary red, I would probably use a vermilion, which has a little bit more yellow in it and mix just a touch maybe of alizarin. And we come very, very close to uh, a primary. And I very seldom use pure primaries in my paintings. I tend to go more in between. I tend to use a color that would be more a two-color mix like cobalt and maybe a little bit of the red. So we get somewhere in between and it's tempered a little bit and it is not quite so intense. These colors are more interesting than these colors would be on a painting. And the same thing again over here with the secondaries. So I think sometimes that's what artists tend to look for is colors that have a personality. Much more fun to look at. We can talk a little bit about some of the paintings that I have uh, standing around here in the studio. And this is a piece where you see a lot of compliments used. Uh, the reds next to the greens. Uh, even on the posts where you see a lot of the uh, shadow and that sort of thing, you see um, lavenders and you see the complement of the lavenders within that same post. A lot of interesting compliments that run through the, uh, through the painting. You also see the blue on the shutters and it complements the orange of the uh, tile on the roofs. It's just a great complement one against the other and it helps to make each part even more um, colorful. Colors are considered either cool or warm. Cool colors are usually in the shades of blue, green, or violet. They are calm, peaceful colors. They can be reminders of very cold things, like snow and ice. They can also remind us of refreshing things, like a cool mountain spring on a hot summer day. Yellow, orange, and red are warm colors. They are bright, attract attention, and bring excitement. They remind us of a bright, hot summer sun, or the warmth of a fire on a cold winter day. Cool and warm colors have a complement in the opposite temperature. Using them in your painting brings about a balance of color that we typically see in nature. You can also make a cool color warm and vice versa. You do this by mixing colors with its complement. This particular piece of course has a tremendous dominance of cool, but to offset that there are some wonderful lavenders that run through that piece and uh, give it a nice sense of change. This piece is very, very unified. Even within the blues and within the very cool areas, you will see a lot of this lavender that sort of runs through it. Okay, let's paint a painting. All right, we're gonna start with these nice, cool colors. We'll paint right through a lot of this, okay? 
I did a little pencil sketch on here preliminarily so I know kind of where my pattern is going to be. We'll paint around a lot of these shapes and just kind of push this color around in the background a little bit. The main thing is to uh, lay it on so that you have nice healing of color so your the surface stays nice and damp as you're painting it. So you get a nice flow of color. Yeah, we have first layer of color on there just like that. Okay, we're going to put a second layer of color on. We'll do the same thing. We're going to use just a, a little stronger color this time. And we're going to lay some color in here. And we're going to get right down into the trees, right down a couple of nice big chunks of tree in here. And let's in the foreground, let's put in some nice shadows here on some of the buildings. Really make this area in the foreground stand out nice. I'm going to do a small set of shapes on top of these shapes we've already laid down just to kind of bring definition to a few of these patterns in here. We'll just kind of push some of these colors and kind of tie everything together with some of these darks. And we'll put in a big chunk of shape over here. And this is kind of like a shadow, maybe, or something to divide up the foreground a little bit. To use all cool colors is not necessarily bad because it tells all the, tells the story. It tells your lights and it tells your darks. And it can have set a mood. So I'll warm that up a little bit. And some of these flatter roofs, uh, probably we're going to pick up a little warmth from the back side. And in the area where we want the center of interest to be, where our lightest lights are and our darkest darks, we just lay in a few little colors in there to give it a little snap. I think that the, the warms have a tendency to be uh, maybe a little bit more entertaining. They certainly will draw attention and uh, bring it more interest maybe to your focal point or your center of interest. And at the same time, in the foreground, we'll use some of the, uh, some of the colors that uh, maybe can add a little bit of visual interest as well. A little bit of warmth uh, goes a long way. And you can just see the little touch of warmth back in here, a little warm up here, a few accents in the trees, and then right around the building. And you really bring attention. And we still have a dominantly cool theme, but the warmth just kind of gives it a, a little bit of entertainment, a little bit more entertainment, and brings attention to where we want the viewer to be. And it kind of rounds out the painting, just gives it a nice sense of completeness, a nice sense of uh, totality. Every color in the spectrum has three main characteristics, hue, intensity, and tonal value. Hue gets mixed up with the word color quite a bit. Hue is a characteristic of color. Hue lets us define a color more specifically. For example, look at green. It can have a blue or yellow hue to it. The yellow-hued green would be a warm green, and the blue-hued green would be a cool green. When you're looking at colors and their complements, the hues all vary in intensity. Intensity refers to the brilliance of the color. Colors can be bright in their intensity or dull. Let's look at yellow. The bright yellow of a daffodil is a high intensity color. The dull yellow of your grandmother's table has a low intensity. 
When you are painting, you need to make sure the intensity of your colors are geared towards each other. This helps create unity in your work. Don't get carried away using too many intense colors. They can make the painting hard to look at. Remember, dull colors aren't bad. They have a softening effect. They work well showing distance or depth. Never use all dull colors either, unless you are going for a dream effect. Even then, you should use some intense colors to accent your work. All colors have a range called tonal value. It's the degree of light versus dark for every color. Using different tones adds depth. Different tonal values also show contrast and make things look more realistic. Value comes from the mixing of white or black into pure colors. Light tone colors have a lot of white mixed in and add illumination. Dark tone colors have black mixed into them and help to create nice shadows. Look at this value chart. There are many values between black and white. Okay, we're going to uh, talk a little bit about uh, hue, intensity, and color. Intensity really refers to how strong the color is, how much pigment maybe is in that uh, color. I think so many times uh, it is hard to determine that, but there are some colors that have a lot more intensity than others. That's viridian. All right, now you see the intensity of that is fairly, fairly strong. We'll take a color like Othello Blue, okay? And in its purest state and in its strongest state, the intensity is much stronger than Viridian. And all colors have that quality. Either they have more intensity or less intensity depending on the nature of that particular color. So if you are looking for colors that will give your paintings tremendous uh, brilliance, then you look for colors that have great intensity. So intensity in color has a lot to do with how strong the color is and how it goes down on your paper. Hue has to do with the change within a color. Uh, for example, if I wanted to change the hue of Viridian Green, if I changed it by adding a little bit of, let's say, red to it. But watch what happens. Now we'll change the hue There it is, as we see it up above. Now, if we change the hue of that a little bit by adding just a touch of, let's say, alizarin to that. All right, now that's still viridian green, but we've changed the hue of it. Tint is really uh, when you add white to a painting. And what we'll do is we'll just make a scale here, starting out maybe with um, a light tint and moving toward a tone uh, within that same color. Let's take a color that has a nice range, okay? Um, a color maybe like, uh, oh, we can take a little bit of uh, vermilion, okay? You can lighten it a little bit too, just by lifting off some of that color. There you get a much more of a tint. You can say, okay, let's go to a little bit darker color, moving more toward a tone. You say, okay, there is a little darker color. There, we've toned it down a little bit by using a neutral. You can use black, or you can use uh, Payne's gray. There we've toned it even more. So you can see the steps. Same color, just by adding a neutral to it, how we can um, increase the tone of that color. Okay, now what would happen if instead of using a neutral, 
if we used an opposite on the color wheel instead. Let's say if we added just a touch of green to our red. We'll add just a touch of green to it. Now this should take us to the same place that this one does. Let's see what happens, or this one. Let's see what happens. That's pretty close. Now this one we added a neutral, like a black or a gray to it. This one we added a complement to it, which was the green on the color wheel. You could actually make a total painting, perhaps, out of one of these colors. You could use either blue or red or green if you wanted to, uh, and do actually a whole painting by just changing, by using a complement with it, or by using uh, just a neutral, you can change the value of that color and the intensity of that color to make it a, a darker tone. We've discussed colors and some of their characteristics. The trick to painting is combining them in a way that is attractive to the eye. You do this by incorporating different color contrasts, like hue, light dark, cool warm, and complementary. Contrast of hue is the difference between the colors used. The strongest are between red, yellow, and blue. Some examples are early stained glass and folk art. Botticelli liked to use contrast of hue, and so did modern painters like Picasso and Matisse. Light-dark contrast integrates the lightest and darkest tones of a color in a work. The strongest light-dark contrast is obviously black and white. A lot of Asian and European art incorporates light-dark contrast. These Japanese ink drawings are good examples. Cool warm contrast deals with the differences in temperature. The strongest is reddish orange and bluish green. The tonal value of the colors should be equal to achieve cool warm contrast, but their temperatures vary. Use two contrasting vivid colors, or two contrasting dull colors, to get the most out of the contrast. Monet and Renoir both used cool warm contrast in their impressionistic works. Complementary contrast deals with the primary colors and their complements. Lots of things in nature have complementary contrast. For example, brilliant red flower petals against the deep green of their stem or the bright orange of a sunset that lies below the darkening sky. Desert flowers, I think, is a good example. There are certain parts of that painting in the background that is very light, and the shapes that are in front of it are darker. So, and what you're really looking at here now is a reversal. It's where the background changes from dark to light, and you have the also, also that same alternation on your shapes that are in front. So what that does for the viewer is it creates a variety. A good example is the horses in this painting. I think what you really see here, the shadows within the horses' bodies themselves are really warm combinations of the colors that I use uh, in a more tinted manner on the highlights of the horse. Like this area in here is really just a shadowed version of this highlight here. And how did I get that? I just used a complement of my red. I used just a touch of green in that. So I got this very nice, very cool uh, kind of red that kind of went in here for the shadows. And what it does is it gives shape and it gives volume to the, to the uh, object that you're painting. If I were to take, let's say, a series of warm colors and say, okay, uh, let's take some nice warm colors here. We'll try to get as many warms and near warms as we can. Maybe even a little bit of nice warm yellow in there. Yeah, that's nice. Nice feel. Nice feel. All right, now what happens when we uh, do something to build the contrast a little bit? As soon as we start building contrast, now watch what starts to happen to these colors. As we see them now, we see them um, fairly nice, fairly nicely uh, related to one another, and, and they seem to have a lot of uh, 
pizzazz, but we can increase that pizzazz by using contrast, okay? Now let's do another one over here using some of those same colors. Now, I have a lot of the same kinds of things happening here. This is, has a lot of those same colors in it. Just the, just the introduction of the whites in the internal part of the painting helps to make the contrast work better and it seems to intensify the colors. So we'll take a nice color mix here. Now what begins to happen is you begin to see much stronger contrast and suddenly these colors seem to be much more intense and much stronger than these colors over here. So in a painting if you want to intensify a color or if you want to bring more contrast to an area save some whites and put some darks next to it and if you do that you will find you add a great deal of excitement to your whites and also to your colors. Every day that I paint I learn more about color and how to use color. I think that if you go into this business of painting with an open mind and look for ways that that you can um, use color in an inventive and innovative way I think you're going to find that you can make a very personal statement in your work about what color means to you and um, what it can mean to the people that view your work. The key to achieving an effective scheme is choosing a good blend of values and intensities. Keep in mind that your strongest contrast should appear at the point of emphasis. The degree of contrast in the outlying area is more subtle and slowly builds toward the focal point. This creates movement for the eye to follow. Now that you've learned about the concepts of color, you probably have some great ideas for incorporating them into your work. Maybe we'll see your work in a place like this someday. Well, see you next time. For more excellent videos, call us toll-free at 1-800-262-8837 or visit our website at www.teachersvideo.com.